I observed the scorched horizon of New Detroit with a lump in my throat. The smoldering ruins of skyscrapers that once challenged the heavens were now mere reservoirs of corpses and bitter memories. The civil war that had been ravaging Earth for years had turned vibrant cities into scenes of horror. Captain Elliot, the rebels are advancing through the rubble of 8th Avenue. A breathless soldier reported, pulling me out of my trance. They have rocket launchers and are reducing our outposts to dust. I clenched my teeth, watching the distant explosions. How could rival factions of the human race be so blind as to destroy their own home? If we continued like this, there would be nothing left for the victors to rule over but ashes. Gather the available platoons and form a defensive line, I ordered firmly. If we retreat, we'll be trapped in the southern perimeter. As the battle resumed, I felt a tremor beneath my feet. The forces in conflict ceased fire, looking up apprehensively. A deafening sound tore through the sky as a massive alien ship entered Earth's atmosphere. For all the stars. I murmured in astonishment, a chill running down my spine. Captain, a blonde scientist monitoring the radar ran up to me. It's a Taraxi warship, Darnoon class. They're transmitting an ultimatum. A deep, metallic voice thundered from the ship's speakers, causing the windows to vibrate. Inhabitants of Earth, this is Commander Zorax of the Taraxi Purification Fleet. Your planet is condemned for harboring a race of inferior and unworthy beings. In the name of the Galactic Council, your existence will be erased. My heart raced. The Taraxi were one of the most ruthless and technologically advanced starfaring races. How had they discovered Earth? And why had they decided to exterminate us now? Before I could fully process the threat, the ship opened fire with a scorching plasma energy beam. The impact disintegrated several city blocks, sending a shockwave that knocked everything within a kilometer radius to the ground. I felt the searing heat on my face as debris rained from the skies. Rebels and government soldiers, who had been killing each other moments ago, ran in desperation in all directions. Absolute chaos ensued with screams of terror and thick smoke. My training took over. I raised my rifle and ordered the men, ignore the factions, gather all available forces and form a defensive perimeter. This is a threat to all of humanity. The Taraxi commander would make no distinctions. We were all weak and condemned humans in their eyes. If we wanted to survive, we needed to unite. For the first time in years, rebel and government soldiers rallied under my command. They fear we might be extinguished before we even become a threat. I thought to myself, watching the alien ship's cannons charge for another devastating shot. It was the beginning of a war for the survival of the human race. The following days were a true trial. Despite our differences, rebels and government soldiers united in an improvised guerrilla resistance against the Taraxi. I led the combined efforts, coordinating ambush attacks and tactical retreats through the ruins of New Detroit. Captain, another enemy convoy crossing the East Zone, Rafe, my young communications operator, warned. His eyes were sunken, his face smudged with soot. I examined the holographic map hovering in front of me. Gather Gamma Platoon at this entry point, I pointed out the coordinates. Once they pass, bring down the remaining buildings behind them with explosives. Let's trap these bastards like rats. Understood, sir, Rafe relayed the orders as I reloaded my pulse rifle. Our supplies were scarce and the casualties heavy. The Taraxi outnumbered us and outgunned us technologically. However, our knowledge of the ruined terrain gave us some advantage in guerrilla tactics. A distant rumble announced the ambush had begun. We ran toward the theater of operations through charred ruins, dodging shots from alien cannons hurling debris around us. Watch out, Sarah, my scientific commander, yelled as a massive steel beam fell nearby. We're almost there. Finally, we spotted our target, the trapped Taraxi convoy, under tons of concrete and twisted steel. We were greeted by frantic plasma weapon fire. I took cover behind a crushed car alongside Sarah. How many survivors, Captain? she asked, reloading her shotgun. Hard to say, I frowned. But we can't take chances. Prepare the sonic impact charges. 
These experimental weapons, based on rock drilling technology, emitted shockwaves capable of stunning and neutralizing targets in confined areas. They should suffice to subdue the trapped Taraxi. After a series of deafening detonations, an eerie silence hung over the debris. Gradually, the twisted hatches of the alien transports opened. One by one, the Taraxi soldiers staggered out, dazed and unresponsive. Captain, what do we do with the prisoners? Sarah asked hesitantly. I observed the semi-conscious alien faces. As much as they were our mortal enemies, we couldn't cross the line into mass execution. Not like this. They've surrendered, so we'll preserve their lives. For now, I forced a stern expression. Gather them up and take them to the detention camp. They might be useful as bargaining chips later. In the following days, the battle for New Detroit only worsened. Massive Taraxi cruisers ravaged the skies with plasma bombs, incinerating entire city blocks. Sarah and her team worked frantically to develop countermeasures, but our chances seemed bleak. It was when High Command in Geneva contacted us with desperate evacuation orders. Estimates indicated we couldn't hold off the Taraxi on Earth for more than a few weeks. Our objective now is to ensure the survival of as many civilians as we can, I explained to everyone gathered in our makeshift den. We'll start moving as many people as possible to orbital colonies and outer systems. But what about us, sir? A scarred-faced rebel soldier interjected. We can't just abandon Earth. We won't, I assured firmly. A resistance force will stay behind and continue delaying the Taraxi for as long as possible. My eyes scanned each tense and weary face. I'll remain with that covering force. Who else is with me? To my relief and pride, there was no hesitation. Rebels and government soldiers raised their weapons in unison, sealing the pact with a single cry. For Earth. For humanity. The following months were a frantic race against time as we led guerrilla attacks to delay the relentless advance of the Taraxi. We allowed the evacuation of millions of civilians from Earth, but at the cost of losing New Detroit and other major cities. When we finally escaped our homeworld on one of the last escape ships, I was greeted by a grim sight. A swarm of Taraxi cruisers mercilessly attacked the fragile human colonies in the outer systems. Damage report, Lieutenant, I demanded as soon as I stepped onto the bridge of the frigate Resilient. We've lost contact with the Ares and Taurus habitats, sir, the communications officer replied, eyes moist. Survivors here were hastily evacuated from the Jupiter colonies, but I estimate tens of thousands of civilians. His voice choked. There was no need to finish the sentence. I clenched my fists with fury. These civilian casualties would not go unpunished. Prepare all ships for counterattack, I marched to the command chair. Gather our remaining fleet here and destroy these damned Taraxi. Our only hope was to defeat the invaders now, before they could call for reinforcements from the Galactic Council. Once the coordinates were plotted, the frigate jumped through the vastness of space toward the Jupiter colonies. What we found was a tumultuous battlefield. Debris and wreckage from both sides floated in the vacuum around the last human habitats. My trackers detected plasma signatures and ion bursts being exchanged in all directions. This is Captain Amalia Vance of Jupiter Space Defense. A female voice came through the emergency channel. Who's out there? We urgently need reinforcements. Amalia, this is Captain Marcus Elliott from Earth, I replied immediately. We have a combined attack force of 53 spacecraft ready to provide cover. A brief sigh of relief came from the line. Thank the stars, I'm sending the coordinates to the battle core. My sensors identified dozens of concentrated heat signatures around a huge toroidal structure. The Jupiter colonies were cyclic clusters with rotating rings producing artificial gravity. Damn, those Taraxi bastards are trying to destroy the containment rings. The lieutenant pointed at the panels. If the habitats lose gravitational rotation. Understood, I cut in determinedly. The entire fleet will concentrate fire on the Taraxi cruisers around the toroid. Divert the plasma cannons and the ships will be drawn by rotation. We have to stop them from hitting the rings. 
the battle that ensued was painfully intense. Everywhere, human and alien ships were torn apart as ion cannons traversed the debris fields in a deadly frenzy. In a flash, an enemy cruiser appeared in my sights. I locked the controls and pressed the trigger for plasma torpedoes. The heavy charges detonated against the Taraxi's armored hull, sending it careening uncontrollably against the gravitational rotation. Direct hit, I cheered, pumping my fist. One more of those and... My brief jubilation dissipated as the radar detected multiple signatures emerging from hyperspace. My face paled as I recognized the patterns of a large-scale Taraxi battle force. Damn it! It's the Taraxi Empire reinforcements, Captain Vance shouted over the channel. We've just been surrounded. I looked at the countdown timer on the upper screen. Five hours until the Taraxi warships reached our position to sweep the surviving colonies. Our forces would never withstand an attack of that magnitude. All ships, prepare for emergency hyperspace jump to the coordinates of these transmissions, I ordered, opening a channel to the human representatives in the Galactic Council. We need urgent diplomatic help before Earth is completely wiped out. In the following weeks, we waged a space guerrilla war against the Turaxi while our representatives at the Galactic Council pleaded for help. The responses from other species were invariably the same. Humans are a new and inferior race. This is an internal matter of the Turaxi Empire. The indifference and disdain only fueled my determination further. I refused to let humanity be erased from the cosmos by alien arrogance. Sarah and her team worked furiously to find any advantage or weakness we could exploit. Captain, we have another coded transmission from the Council, Rafe announced one morning in our secret hideout. I frowned. Another rejection. If so, spare your... No, sir, it's a new representative from the Astar League. He interrupted excitedly. She says she wants to help us in secret. My eyes widened. The Astari were an ancient militaristic race integrated into the Council, respected for their code of honor and strength. If they had sympathizers with us, perhaps there was hope. The transmission revealed the feline face of a middle-aged Astari woman, with sharp eyes and fangs. Captain Elliot, I am Chief of State Ristheller. I oppose the cowardly oppression of the Council against humans. It's an honor, Chief Ristheller, I replied formally. How can we count on your support? Through one of my informants, we obtained technical data on a critical weakness in the Taraxi's weapon and engine systems. She frowned feline. Using a specific modulation of encoded gamma radiation, it's possible to overload and disable their entire fleet temporarily. My mind began to trace all tactical possibilities as Sarah studied the transmitted data frantically. If we can integrate this into our weapons and shields. The scientist murmured, concentrated. Yes, it's feasible. We'll need days to adjust the cycles and modulations, but it's our chance. My fist clenched with a spark of hope. How much time do we have, Chief Rhys Little, I fear, she growled. The Council plans an emergency meeting in three days to vote on reinforcing the Taraxi blockade. After that, I swallowed hard, weighing the immense risks. Understood. We'll make the preparations. Thank you very much for your courage. Don't thank me yet, Captain. The Chief of State nodded solemnly. This battle will define the fate of your species. For the honor of my ancestors, I root for your victory. The transmission ended, and I stared into the starry void. I felt the weight of hundreds of human generations on my shoulders. It was time to risk everything in one last desperate gambit. All hands to stations. Prepare the weapons and computrix according to Sarah's specifications, I shouted to the crew. In three days, we'll have a single chance to stop the Taraxi and change the course of this war. My soldiers threw themselves into work with a renewed vigor. This was our opportunity to turn the tide and prove our bravery to the arrogant council. Fail and humanity would face extinction. On the third day, the dreaded transmission from the Council arrived. A metallic, emotionless voice echoed coldly. Captain Elliot, this is an official order. 
all human forces must cease any further resistance to the Taraxi and surrender immediately. Your right of representation in the council has been unanimously revoked. I let the words hang in the air like a death sentence. Then I raised the communicator with a defiant smile. Negative council. This time, it's you who will listen to us. My system's operators coded the final commands, and without warning, our entire fleet emitted an electromagnetic pulse modulated at the secret gamma frequency against the Turaxi's armed might. It was instantaneous. One by one, the alien cruisers were struck by cataclysmic overloads. Their weapons and reactors deactivated, leaving them adrift like inert husks in the vacuum. Even Commander Zorax's immense flagship was swallowed by the darkness of space. Impossible. The Council's voice screamed in absolute shock. How did you? It's human determination and ingenuity, you fools. I practically spat the words. And it's only the beginning. In a miraculous turnaround, our blinded forces hunted down and destroyed the few Taraxi that had remained operational. The victory that seemed impossible was within our grasp. For the first time in centuries, the Galactic Council held a reverent silence before the newly integrated humans who challenged their authority. Our roar of defense had only just begun. In the days following our surprising turnaround against the Taraxi, the entire galaxy entered a state of shock and apprehension. The Galactic Council, which had previously ignored our pleas, now regarded us with a mixture of fear and reluctant respect. Sitting on the bridge of the Resilient, I watched dozens of alien representatives in their ornate attire, waiting on a closed-circuit transmission channel. Beside me, Sarah and my senior officers also watched tensely. It seems we've finally got their attention, I murmured with a wry smile. They know they can no longer underestimate us, Captain, Sarah adjusted her glasses. For the first time, humanity stands in a position to negotiate on equal footing. A leader with an elongated head took the floor in a diplomatic tone. Captain Elliot, the Galactic Council acknowledges your martial achievement against the Taraxi. In the interest of preserving peace, we offer a total cessation of hostilities in exchange for the surrender of humanity and your return to the integration process. A wave of indignation swept through the bridge. To refuse again would paint us as belligerent aggressors, but simply surrendering after all we had endured? Not a chance. Council representatives, I began with a measured and resolute voice. Humanity desires no further conflict, but we also refuse to be belittled or oppressed any longer. Several alien leaders exchanged nervous glances as I continued. For centuries, our race has been subjugated and treated as unworthy inferiors. The Taraxi chose to eradicate us when in fact we were just a helpless species seeking belonging. I recalled the ruins of Nova Detroit and the millions of lives lost. This arrogant and exclusionary mindset of the Council must change, as well as its flawed structures of representation. Do you dare to threaten us? A metallic voice growled. No, I simply state the facts. I took a deep breath, clasping my hands behind my back. If you truly desire peace, the Council must reform itself and accept humanity as equals in a fair and democratic system. No longer as outcasts, but as respected partners. A heavy silence hung for a few moments. Until, to my surprise, Chief Ristaler spoke up. Captain Elliot speaks with reason and honor, she announced bluntly. The Astar Code cannot support an oppressive and selective order. Therefore, my nation joins the humans in their just demand for reforms in the Council. Other alien representatives began to position themselves between the sides, eager not to be the next to express their loyalties. The old Council block quickly disintegrated before the inevitable. You have won this time, human. The elongated head leader conceded begrudgingly. Your request for equitable representation will be discussed and implemented. But let this end once and for all the conflicts between our species. I let out a long sigh, seeing the tension leave Sarah's and the crew's shoulders. A new era was finally dawning in the cosmos. So we have an agreement, I assured with a solemn nod. May this battle serve as an example of what humanity can achieve when united and challenged.
our future now belongs to the stars. In the years that followed, the Council was completely revamped into a new alliance of species with fair codes and rules. Humanity assumed its rightful seat of power and prestige, leading alongside other progressive nations in building a galactic order that valued cooperation and equality for all. Some dissenting voices, of course, did not readily accept the changes. But this time, with the military might and unwavering determination of united humanity, these dark forces were promptly subdued. Our journey was finally just beginning. In the years following the restructuring of the Council, it was a time of intense work and reconstruction for humanity. With our colonies devastated by the Taraxi, we had to start practically from scratch in several star systems. How bad is the situation, Sarah? I asked my old friend and advisor as we walked through the corridors of the new Alliance home station, our temporary operational base. Sarah adjusted her glasses and consulted her data tablet. The latest estimates indicate that about 40% of the human population in space was decimated during the chaotic attacks and evacuations, she sighed heavily. Fortunately, most children and elderly were the first to be evacuated from Earth, so our genetic base remains viable. I swallowed hard at the grim numbers. During the war, we barely had time to stop and assess the cost in lives. Now that the dust was settling, the stark reality confronted us. And what about our industrial and scientific capabilities? I inquired, hoping for better news. Our losses were severe, but we managed to preserve the main research and production centers in the colonies on Mars and Jupiter's moons at least. Sarah gave a reassuring pat on my shoulder. We'll rebuild, Marcus. It's what we do best. I nodded with renewed determination. Our fight was just beginning. In the weeks that followed, I coordinated a massive task force in the inner systems to restore our basic infrastructure and reactivate supply lines. However, it didn't take long for our human limitations to become evident. We urgently needed to develop new technologies at an accelerated pace to keep up with the progress of other species in the Reformed Council, both in military capability and civilian applications. That's when I received a transmission from the alien representatives of the Sinirin nations, a grouping of ancient and widely respected species for their scientific and cultural wisdom. Captain Elliot, the Sinirin matriarch, waved from the holographic screen in one of the greatest displays of humility I had ever witnessed. We've come to offer a gift to humanity as a gesture of reparation for centuries of postponement. At her signal, Dozens of massive data banks were sent to our networks. I held my breath as Sarah began to decode the packages. By the galaxy, she gasped in awe. These are complete repositories of technical and theoretical knowledge from various Sinirin disciplines. Material engineering, molecular biology, hyperspace travel, everything. I raised my eyebrows, stunned. But this must have been compiled over centuries, millennia maybe, why would they give it all to us for free? Because we recognize how unfair we were in hindering your earlier development, the matriarch nodded solemnly. This is a small compensation for our arrogance. I contemplated the torrent of stellar data flowing into our networks with a mix of humility and renewed purpose. This donation represented not only a tremendous technological leap, but also a vote of confidence from the most respected nations in the galaxy. We have much to learn and absorb, I reinforced to Sarah and my team. But with this knowledge, our ascent will be unstoppable. Let's seize this opportunity to innovate and exceed all expectations, as only humans know how to do. And so, what seemed like only a few stellar cycles later, humanity emerged as one of the greatest powers in the new galactic order. Our star fleets were completely revamped with the latest innovations in Sinirin engineering. Our colonies thrived once again, and even new state-of-the-art scientific stations were established in orbit around unexplored planets. Some of this, of course, was also due to the newfound respect that humanity had rightfully earned in the Council. Our voice was heard and considered as valid as the oldest races when making decisions that impacted the entire known cosmos. However, not even our impetuous resurgence was free from setbacks. Certain dark and reactionary factions did not graciously accept humanity's emerging power. 
threats from dissidents opposed to the reformed council began to accumulate. Sitting in the Situation Chamber of Home Station, I watched with concern as successive threat transmissions were displayed on the large galactic holomap. Even after the Council's restructuring, some extremist groups refused to relinquish their old dominion. Another sabotage attack against a Zemiri supply convoy, Sarah frowned, studying the reports. And the Jihrent Holly had one of their space yards sabotaged by explosions. I ran a hand through my graying chin thoughtful. Clearly, these weren't isolated acts. There's coordination behind these assaults. I agree, Captain, one of the present Sinirin officers nodded with sorrow. Obscure dissident groups are organizing, likely former influential members of the old council. A shiver ran down my spine as I remembered how the indifference and arrogance of that corrupt regime had nearly led humanity to extinction. We couldn't allow such a threat to gain strength again. Gentlemen, gather our top intelligence analysts, I ordered seriously. I need a comprehensive assessment of the capabilities and potential objectives of these insurgents in the coming cycles. For days, we worked tirelessly gathering all the scattered clues and evidence. In the end, the terrible truth was revealed this was a vast network of separatists aiming to regain absolute control over the galaxy through brute force if necessary. They've managed to infiltrate agents into various nations, compromise entire fleets, Sarah pointed to the panels, concerned. And apparently, they're gaining access to a vast arsenal of prohibited weapons and technologies. I felt my blood run cold. At any moment, this threat could escalate into a new large-scale war, dragging all nations into an unprecedented fratricidal conflict. We have to stop them before it's too late. One of the Astari commanders growled. My forces can depart for interdiction operations immediately. I raised a hand in a gesture to wait. Years of war had taught me to be cautious when impulsiveness and zeal could further inflame tensions. Wait, comrade, I replied calmly, studying each of the leaders present. Aliens and humans finally united as equals against a common threat. We cannot allow these remnants of the old council to divide us again. We need a surgical, precise, and innovative strategy. I forced my voice to remain impassive. Something only humanity can achieve. The following weeks witnessed a complete mobilization of all our military and intelligence forces. Sarah and her team worked 24 cycles a day to develop new tactics and weapons that would give us an edge over the insurgents. When we finally launched our offensive, the attacks came from totally unexpected angles from advanced cyber operations capable of sabotaging entire weapon systems, to deep infiltrations with special forces trained to capture high-level rebel leaders. One by one, the separatists' bases and supply channels were being overrun and dismantled with lethal precision. Even their acquired force fields and stealth technologies were no match for our tactical ingenuity. Finally, when we located the insurgent central core hidden in a remote base within a cluster of black holes, there was no physical confrontation or explosions. In one night, all rebel leadership woke up chained to anti-bribery cells designed by our team, Captain Elliot. The captured leader looked at me with a mixture of fury and astonishment. How did you find us? Impossible. Never underestimate the determination and inventiveness of humanity. I replied with a slight victorious smile. Your reactionary movement is over. The new order will prevail. With the dissident threat finally neutralized, an era of true peace and cooperation finally dawned in the galaxy. A renaissance in diplomatic relations and shared scientific advancement occurred without the shackles of the old oppressive council. At the center of this revolution, Humanity increasingly took a leadership position alongside other progressive nations. We pioneered countless fronts, from the exploration of cosmic anomalies to the establishment of commercial and cultural alliances linking star systems. It was on one of these galactic reconnaissance missions that we made the greatest discovery of all. The decades that followed were a period of unprecedented prosperity and cooperation in the galaxy. With the separatist threat finally extinguished, Nations could finally channel all resources into scientific advancement and the exploration of new cosmic frontiers. 
leading one of the largest combined task forces ever assembled, I embarked on an ambitious expedition towards the farthest and most unexplored regions of the outer spiral arms. Our fleet was a true sample of galactic diversity, towering Sinirin cruisers lined up alongside sleek Astari ships, while human transports conversed with Zemiri anomaly penetrating vessels. We're receiving the first reconnaissance data, Captain, Sarah announced from the science station as I gazed into the infinite through the panoramic window. This region is teeming with giant clusters and thousands of unexplored star systems. I nodded with a confident smile. Excellent. How many potentially viable settlement planets have been identified? So far, about 2,000 possibilities within a radius of three parsecs. She adjusted her glasses, surprised. That's more than double the size of the largest colony ever established. A raspy voice from one of the Astari officers cleared his throat. With such a vast area to expand, we can allocate specific resources and personnel to advance areas like subatomic curvature and black hole physics. And establish mining outposts and exotic material refining, a towering Zemiri admiral chimed in, his ocular appendages blinking excitedly. We've literally struck gold in new frontiers. I smiled satisfactorily, watching the stellar holograms dance around us. This was the true miracle of the New Order finally, all species were united and inspired to collaborate, rather than fight and destroy each other. A legacy that could never exist if humanity hadn't overcome the setbacks of the old council. Well, my friends, this is our next big leap, I declared enthusiastically. Let's map and colonize these new systems before the rigors of the ancient universe consume everything we've built. For cycles, we were absorbed in preparations, assembling expeditions and scientific teams composed of a true mosaic of species and complementary visions. Wherever we went, we established advanced bases, stellar habitats, and mining outposts. Our achievements were celebrated in all civilizations as a new age of discovery, a promising era of infinite frontiers. But even our brightest minds weren't prepared for what awaited us at the dense core of that region. Captain, I'm receiving readings of massive artificial debris in a very peculiar orbit, Sarah frowned as she studied her data. It's behaving almost like a containment megastructure. I furrowed my brows. Containment of what? Redirect some of our cruisers to investigate. As our ships approached, the sensor painted a huge image that left everyone stunned. There, suspended in space by an elaborate anti-gravitational containment system, were the most colossal ruins the galaxy had ever witnessed. Blackened debris of what were once huge arcologies and space stations stretched in orbit around a twisted metallic colossus the size of a small moon. Scanners confirmed the worst hypothesis, it was the remnant of a technologically extinct civilization. What kind of race could have built something of such titanic proportions? The Zemiri Admiral marveled, bewildered. An extremely advanced one, with energy and computational resources far beyond anything we've ever seen, Sarah swallowed hard. We'll need years, maybe centuries, to decode and understand the mysteries of this ancient ruin. I gazed for ages at the remnants of that ancient and extinct race, pondering the challenges we would surely face. Investigating these remains would be as monumental an undertaking as their own construction. But if there was any chance of extracting knowledge, we couldn't waste it. No, I spoke at last with determination, making everyone look in my direction. We're not just going to decipher these remains. We're going to fully reconstruct them and uncover what could have led this civilization to ruin. My eyes gleamed with grandiose prospect. It's time once again to prove that human ingenuity and audacity can overcome any obstacle. The following years witnessed the greatest interspecies cooperation effort ever seen in the galaxy. The combined might of our united civilizations was channeled towards a single ambitious goal, unraveling the mysteries of the ancient extinct race whose colossal ruins we had discovered. Status report, Sarah, I requested as I entered the vast operations chamber of Station Lar. Control panels of all allied species worked frantically, coordinating simultaneous work on thousands of tasks. We've finally managed to restore and recouple the primary dark matter reactors of the ruins, Captain, 
she adjusted her glasses, studying the data. Thanks to the curvature engineering knowledge of the Zemiri, we'll soon have enough energy to restart the primary systems. I nodded with a confident smile, scanning the huge holographic screens. We had already revitalized structures the size of planets, unthinkable for any civilization individually. With our combined resources and minds, the limits were dissipating. It appears this construct was a stellar-scale technological forge of this ancient race, one of the Sinirin admirals approached. Designed to harness the energy of black holes and gather interstellar resources. Someone like us would need resources like that to sustain an engineering force capable of rebuilding it entirely, Sarah reflected, incredulous. I gave her a confident look. That's precisely why we're doing this together. Because each of our races alone would never be capable. For years, our best engineers, physicists, programmers, and archaeologists worked tirelessly like worker bees in a single galactic hive. Progress that would take centuries for an isolated civilization was now achieved in stellar cycles. As additional portions of the gigantic arcologies were revitalized, more secrets were revealed. Propulsion systems based on space-time continuum tearing. Computers beyond the universal scale of processing. Even mind-matter cloning techniques that challenged our conventional understanding of consciousness. We're getting closer to the core mysteries of this race, Marcus. Sarah smiled one day, truly amazed. Their final advancements were situated in regions beyond the boundary of known universes. I smiled back, reminiscing our long journey to that point. From nearly extinct fugitives to explorers of the galaxy's remotest frontiers. All thanks to humanity's persistence, creativity, and unity with other progressive species. Until finally, after stellar cycles of immense effort, we reactivated the central information systems of what once was the primordial core of that civilization. A cascade of data and encrypted files overflowed our networks. The artificial intelligences we had developed especially for this task worked day and night decoding everything. That's when my personal communicator beeped. It was Sarah with a grave expression. Marcus, you need to see this immediately. Once alone in my private command room, Sarah opened a text file on her tablet. Our eyes managed to unpack this fragment from the primary records of this race. It contains one of the last transmissions from one of their top scientific leaders before the final collapse. I swallowed hard, focusing on the words that began to appear on the screen. My brothers and sisters of the Great Union, I fear my dire predictions were correct. The Singularity program based on multiversal processing has led our civilization too far, and now we are literally unable to turn back from this transcendental path. A shockwave ran through me as we read the final bleak lines of the message. The final collapse of the ancient civilization, predicted and perhaps even planned by themselves, was beyond anything our minds could process. An irreversible rupture of reality itself when they delved too deeply into the hidden hyperspaces of the cosmos. I looked at the reactivated monoliths around me with a mix of admiration, dread, and fascination. How could we even think of following in the footsteps of this vanished civilization? Sarah, I forced the words out. I think we've finally reached the limits of what's safe to explore in this mystery. She nodded somberly, calculations already running in her brilliant mind. All right, I'll immediately gather all the leaders and start preparing for the preservation and archiving of this transcendental knowledge until our species are finally ready in due time. At that moment, I perfectly understood the dilemma that ancient race must have faced. How to halt an unstoppable quest for advancement when it could ultimately lead to the obliteration of everything. With sorrow, but also hope, I determined that our united galaxy would explore only to the known safe limits. Who knows, perhaps in a future era, the lessons of that prodigious race would finally allow us to go beyond without making the same fatal mistakes. The eras that followed our encounter with the mysteries of the ancient transcendent civilization were a period of introspection, consolidation, and preparation for the entire United Galaxy. Though ambitious, we were also cautious not to repeat the same fatal mistakes. Under my guidance, a vast network of archives and knowledge repositories was established across various star systems. 
there, guarded by strong security measures and containment, remained the deepest secrets we had uncovered about the ancient extinct race. One day, perhaps centuries or millennia ahead, when our species had finally evolved enough, this capital wisdom would be explored again. But for now, we preferred to proceed within the known rational limits. The integration of the ancient civilization's databases into our mesh computers is complete, Captain. Sarah entered my office with a proud smile. We can finally begin planning our next phase of expansion with all that wealth of knowledge as a foundation. I raised my gaze from my notes with a pensive expression. Have you determined which research and exploration fronts we should allocate our best resources and minds to? Yes, and I'm afraid you won't like it, she frowned as she handed me a data chip. According to the prediction algorithms, for us to transcend safely and rationally as the next step, we'll need to reallocate over 70% of our productive and scientific forces to the efforts of remapping the entire fabric of space-time in the galaxy. I let out a long sigh, contemplating the enormity of that challenge. It wouldn't be a quick or easy feat. It would demand a joint effort and an unprecedented understanding of the fundamental mysteries of the cosmos. All right, Sarah, I forced a confident smile, placing my hands on the desk. You know as well as I do that no goal has ever been too great or daunting to deter humanity and its valiant allies before. We won't start now. And so began a new era in galactic existence. A union of nations and species like never before, dedicating the largest portion of their resources to a single grand scientific purpose. We expanded our observation and mapping networks to all extents of the known galaxy. Probes, telescopes, lasers, and reference particles were launched from the farthest regions and anomalies, all coordinated in perfectly synchronized manner. I watched with pride as each consecutive phase of the grand project was successfully completed. Planetary-scale computing systems and energies drawn from black holes sustained the foundational parameters of this monumental effort. With each passing year, our understanding of the fundamentals of the space-time continuum increased exponentially. Concepts that would have been unthinkable one day now became as malleable as the foundations of the theory of relativity. Who would have thought that one day we would see the very atoms of space and time flickering? Sarah admired the hypercosmic light show projected in the hologram room. And to think that humanity almost didn't survive to witness this. I reflected with a serene smile. It took so many struggles, sacrifices, and challenges just to bring us to this shining point. She nodded solemnly. Speaking of which, I received the latest update from the Universal Historiographers. The Transcendent Council asked us to put the finishing touches on the segments dedicated to the human journey to this stage of enlightenment. I raised an eyebrow with curiosity as she opened the immersive simulation. Immediately, I was transported to a hyper-vivid reconstruction of the battlefield in New Detroit, where it all began centuries ago. I witnessed again the fateful moment when the Taraxi arrived threatening to destroy humanity. I saw my younger self uniting human forces for the first time in a desperate resistance. The scenes changed rapidly, showing our resurgence against all odds. The cataclysmic space confrontations, the relentless challenges of the oppressive Galactic Council, to the final decisive victory over the dissenters who almost engulfed the galaxy in a new cycle of darkness. Every step of the way, every twist and turn of the human trajectory was perfectly reenacted in glorious detail. It was our eternal legacy, my deceased ancestors could finally contemplate how our heroic resilience overcame all adversities to bring glory and unity to the galaxy. It's all there, Sarah smiled with tears gleaming in her eyes. The essence of human determination recorded for all eternity. That's how we'll be remembered when we finally transcend. I nodded in silence, watching the simulation flicker and restart. I raised my old fist towards the battlefields of the distant past. That has always been your destiny, humanity, I forced an emotional smile. Be the heralds of unwavering perseverance for all species and times, the ultimate example that no obstacle is too great to stop us. In the years that followed, we advanced to a sublime level of existence never imagined. We would become the pioneers of the first great transcendent union of collective minds, 
an ocean of enlightened consciousnesses and full spiritual prosperity for all races. At the heart of this monumental leap was humanity, providing the essential beacon of unwavering determination that guided us through the darkness to that glorious new dawn. An eternal legacy that would never be erased from the folds of the cosmos, shining as inspiration for any other civilizations that would one day ascend and discover their own paths to conscious enlightenment. The human journey would never end, for we had been the first and the last heralds of that trait so simple and resilient, the unwavering refusal to ever falter, no matter how great the challenge.